Now to close out the telecast this week, I would like to read from Exodus 12 uh, in the Expositor's Study Bible. I will read the scripture and the notes and indicate such to you as we go along. Let's start in the 12th verse, uh, Exodus 12:12, 12, 12, Scripture. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Notes. The words pass through could be translated go through since the word used is entirely unconnected with the Passover. According to Exodus 12, 23, the Lord did not personally go through the land of Egypt this particular night, but rather he used an angel. The beasts were included because animal worship was an important part of the religion of the Egyptians. So the Lord directed his judgment against every facet of Egyptian life and living. Verse 13, Scripture. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. Notes. The blood applied to the doorpost meant that their faith and trust were in the Paschal Lamb. The blood then applied was only a token, meaning that it was to be the symbol of one who was to come who would redeem mankind by the shedding of his life's blood. And of course we know that that's Jesus Christ they're talking about. Scripture, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This is without a doubt one of the single most important scriptures in the entirety of the Word of God. The Lamb had taken the fatal blow. And because it had taken the blow, those in the house would be spared. It was not a question of personal worthiness. Self had nothing whatsoever to do in this matter. It was a matter of faith. All under the cover of the blood were safe, just as all who are presently under the cover of Jesus' blood are safe. This means that they were not merely in a savable state, but rather they were saved, quote unquote, as well. They were not partly saved and partly exposed to judgment. They were wholly saved. They were totally saved, hallelujah. And just because there, uh, and, and because there is no such thing as partial justification, the Lord didn't say, when I see you, or when I see your good works. But rather, he said, when I see the blood. This speaks of Christ and what he would do at the cross in order that we might be saved. Which pertain to him giving himself in sacrifice, which necessitated the shedding of his precious blood. Praise God. Scripture. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Notes. Salvation from the plague of judgment is afforded only by the shed blood of the Lamb and faith in that shed blood. Verse 14. Scripture. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. You shall keep it a feast unto the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Notes. The Passover is continued now in the Lord's Supper. The ordinance of the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 7 through 8. In this way, uh, the Passover may be regarded as still continuing unto Christianity and is intended to, to continue at least throughout the kingdom age, which is yet to come. Praise God. The Passover per se is not continued simply because it represented the type. Of course, the type was Christ. Uh, the type was carried out, and the representation of the type was carried out through the offering of clean animals. Now that Christ has come and fulfilled the type, 
it would not be proper to eat the Passover as it was once celebrated because all that it symbolized or represented was fulfilled in Christ. Now I want to do one more verse and I want you to go back in your Bibles to Exodus chapter uh, 12 verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read the scripture and the notes. And that's how we're going to close this telecast today. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. The person doesn't really begin to live until he comes to Christ. Hallelujah. I was 18 years old when I got saved. And, and I, I didn't begin to live really until then. Praise God. Christ is the beginning of life. Christ is the beginning of new life for you that are watching me right now. Praise God. And as well, the believer doesn't really begin to enjoy the more abundant life afforded him by Christ until the believer understands God's prescribed order of victory, which is Christ and the cross. And, and the cross exclusively. It's not Christ a little bit and something else a little bit. It's not the cross a little bit and something else a little bit. It's Christ and the cross exclusively. And then the Holy Spirit can go to work in our lives to bring about the graces of the fruit of the Spirit. You can read Romans 8, uh, verses 1 and 2. You can read Galatians 5, verses 16 through 25. All believers have more abundant life but all believers are not enjoying more abundant life. Let me say that again. All believers have abundant life. John 10.10 10. The thief cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy. But I am come, Jesus said, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. But all believers are not enjoying more abundant life. And in fact, they cannot until they learn God's prescribed order of victory, which is the cross. And as we close, I'm going to give you the scripture reference that you can look uh, to see and understand that. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Also, verse 21, verse 23. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. Galatians 6, 14. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Those scriptures lay it out. Praise God. It's the cross, the cross, the cross. I pray that you've enjoyed all these little devotions from Exodus chapter 12. God bless you.